So I was working on a computer for obvious reasons, and I found a really cool, simple method to implement easy right-click detection that works from very far distances. I'm right-clicking on the mouse, and the mouse is cycling what camera, and you can see that it works from a lot of angles and distances. Now I'm right-clicking on the keyboard, and the keyboard is cycling night vision on and off. So it's very accurate, and it takes zero commands. So I can just easily right-click here, and here I am, and I can exit, and I can change the camera mode, and what camera, right click again, and exit. Just easy like that. So we're going to go over this right click detection method that requires zero commands, uh, at least actively, and it takes, uh, it's really easy to set up. So if you didn't see the thumbnail, <laughs> this is the detection method. Yes, villagers. And I know that you might be thinking, oh, villagers so overdone. This is old school. What are you doing, man? Like create a scoreboard, scoreboard objectives, add talk, minecraft.custom, minecraft.talk to villager and uh, be done with it. So you create the talk scoreboard, C1, and then maybe Raycast to figure out which one you right clicked on. Now, nah, this one is even better than that. Uh, it takes a little bit more file work, but it's definitely worth it. So here we obviously have these villagers and they all have their own tags. All of the conjoined villagers, so the ones next to each other, have the same tags, and uh, the separate when the, the separated ones have different tags. So let's take a look at Misode's website, which I think he recently updated. So here we have Misode's website, and it is the advancement generator. So in 1.15 or 16, they added an advancement criteria trigger called player interact with entity. And what this essentially does is the player interacts with an entity and you can give conditions based on it so when you right click a villager this will trigger so we can also specify specifically what entity so let's specify what this entity is so let's go ahead and add some specifications so we have entity being villager and we can add mbt being tags and we can give it some tags. So we have, for mine, I have computer and keyboard as one of the set tags. So when you do this, what it'll do is it'll activate only when you right click on the keyboard tagged villager, which is very convenient because you know specifically what the player right clicked on. You don't know where they clicked, right? But you know that they clicked and that's usually enough to go off of. Um, and I think you also need uh, conditions, yeah. So you should be probably in conditions mode. I think legacy mode might still work, but I prefer to stay in conditions mode and add a this to it um, just to be safe. Uh, Cause sometimes it bugs out and says not, you didn't specify the entity. So I just went with this. Now the last piece of thing you need is a reward and you need a function reward. So I do G colon and then path to my, uh, path to my function. Go ahead and copy paste everything on the right side here into your test function advancement. So control A, control V, and here we have it, all the checks. So when I type reload, and then I pop open my function that says test, which also says yes. I'll right click this and it will say yes. Now, finally, the last little bit is to revoke the advancement. So slash advancement, revoke, add S only, G colon test, and this will make it so that you can right click it multiple times because right now I still have the advancement so it will not say yes anymore. Okay, so we do that, we type reload, we revoke it, and now every time I click it, it will say yes. And that's it. So that's how you get this whole villager detection thing going. Um, and it's very accurate. You can use baby villagers, you can use armor stands. Those are only, they're only ones that'll work with like direct right click detection. Uh, and we can get rid of these files because we don't need them anymore and uh, yeah so it's very accurate and uh, it's pretty cool so that's pretty much all I want to show you guys today just a quick tutorial on something you might not know was possible um, also this is the flashlight from last video but I amped it up to work even better so you have a lot of shine going on because I make the light uh, a function of the distance so you have with some scaling factors so that it does max out at some point uh, so it doesn't over but then when you turn the light on you can definitely see the saturation and uh, We have the cameras which we can pick up and we can move somewhere else just like that 
And uh, you already saw what cameras look like, so let me show you what cameras with the light turned on looks like. So we're going to turn the light on and we're going to... Oop. We have some weirdities. There we go. All right, so then we have cam one here. And uh, if we go into it, you can see oversaturation with night vision on uh, because that's what happens when you have night vision and you have a light on. So that's why you would want to exit night vision mode. So that's why we have the two modes for night vision and non-night vision. And uh, your flashlight turns off when you enter camera mode. Anyways, that's it. That's all I want to show you guys. Uh, obviously, I know that some of you are going to be interested in how I did the camera stuff. And I will be making another video on tutorials with shaders coming up soon. The cameras specifically for the CRT and the color changing uh, is really just a combination of my exposure function that I used for the flashlight uh, mixed with a creeper mixed with a CRT, which is something given in the default files, which we'll go through uh, next time. But this is just a creeper. I'm spectating a creeper. It's the same thing I showed in my beginner shader tutorial where you spectate an entity and the entity applies the shader. Uh, and then I TP the creeper away when you're not spectating it. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.